So we know that all life evolved from a single origin. And this means that all living things have a common ancestor at some point in time. The interesting question is, how do we determine the relationships between species? How do we tell which species are closely related and which species are more distantly related? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video on evolutionary relationships. And it has a lot to do with using the DNA nucleotide sequence or the protein amino acid sequence. Let's get stuck in. Well, to start off this lesson, I want to play a game. The game is called Pick the Odd One Out. And I'm going to show you three different species and I want you to look at their physical appearance characteristics and try and work out the odd one out. Let's start with chimpanzee, lemon tree, and me, human. Okay, yes, lemon tree. All right, what if we change it around, get rid of chimpanzee, bring in palm tree. Palm tree, lemon tree, human. Now it would be human, correct. All right, what about palm tree, horse, human? Now we'd go for palm tree as the odd one out because we're still looking at limbs and things like eyes and ears and a lot more common features between these two than with the palm tree. What about palm tree, horse and goldfish? Hmm. Still palm tree. We've still got more similar features between these two animals here than we do over here. Finally, what about shark, horse, and goldfish? Then we'd go for horse. Horse is the odd one out because there's more common features between a shark and a goldfish than there is with the horse. So that's that game of pick the odd one out based on appearance. So what gives an organism its appearance or any of its characteristics for that matter? Well, the characteristics or appearance of an organism, as we know, come from the proteins that they contain. And the proteins are produced in the cells of that organism and are coded for by genes. And the genes are found in the DNA. So the organisms that looked similar or had similar characteristics, they have similar DNA. And that is the key to determining evolutionary relationships. Here's an example of what we call a phylogenetic tree. This shows the years from present. So here is present going back every 100 million years. So here we're 600 million years ago. And at this point, all of these species here shared a common ancestor 600 million years ago. Over time, they have split away from each other and branched off into separate species. And over that time, the reason that they have separated into different species is because there have been changes in their DNA that have made them different and so different that they're now different species. If we have a look at here, lizards and snakes, their separation point is only about 100 million years ago. In evolutionary terms, that's not very long at all. It sounds like a long time, and that's because we need an enormous amount of time for evolution to take place. But if you think about lizards and snakes, they are two fairly similar species. And the reason for that is that they separated only recently. Their DNA has not had much time to change. However, if you take lizards and bony fish, for an example, they separated, we follow lizards back along this tree and follow bony fish back and we get to about 500 million years ago, which means their DNA has had a lot of time in order to change. And so there would be many more differences in their DNA sequences. 
So the thing to consider is, although in the game that we just played, it was fairly easy to pick the odd one out, it's not always that straightforward. It is quite tricky to work out evolutionary relationships, and that's why we need to use DNA nucleotide sequences or protein amino acid sequences. And scientists have the ability to look at those sequences for different species and compare them to work out the differences and similarities. Let's have a look at a few examples. So scientists are able to actually determine the DNA nucleotide sequence for a particular species. For example, if we take human here, just put myself over there, and let's say where the scientists are analysing a section of my DNA. This would be a very small section because it's only a very small amount of uh, nucleotide bases here. We've got these bases. And if we were to compare that particular sequence from the same gene in the same location on a different species, the amount of similarities or differences would show us the relationship between them. So if this is human, and we were to compare that to chimp, let's take away human, and bring in chimp. So for chimpanzee, you can see the red bits are where the differences are. But overall, there's quite a bit of similarity between the human and the chimpanzee DNA. In fact, between human and chimpanzee DNA, there's an amazing 98% similarity. Whereas if we look at a different species, like the goldfish, for example, let's bring in the sequence for our goldfish. And this again is compared to human. And you can see the red sections are the differences. The black sections are where there's similar DNA to human there's a lot more differences and that shows that there's a further distance of separation between humans and goldfish than there is between humans and chimpanzees. So that's using DNA sequencing. So thanks to our little goldfish there. I actually bought a goldfish from the pet store the other day. I said, um, I'll have one goldfish please. The pet store owner said, would you like an aquarium? And I just stared at him and said, do I look like someone who cares what star sign it is? Yeah, that was weird. Anyway, the other technique that scientists can use is called DNA-DNA hybridization. And that's where they take a sample of DNA from the same region, from two different species, mix them together, heat them up so that their double strands separate, and then cool them down so that some of the strands from the different species will actually come together. And what we find there is if we have a species that are closely related, they'll match up and their base pairs will join together. If we have a spe two species that aren't very closely related, they won't match up in many places and you'll see something more similar to this. And the way that they can test that is when they heat them again, if there's been a good match, it'll take a higher temperature to separate the strands. If there's been a poor match, it won't take a very high temperature to separate the strands again. So this would be the example you would see between say a human and a chimpanzee DNA sample. And this is more like what you would see between human and goldfish DNA. So the final technique that can be used is called protein comparison, which is where we're looking at the amino acid sequence from the same protein in two different species. We need common proteins to do this. One really common one is cytochrome C. Here's a picture of the cytochrome C protein. And what we do is we take the cytochrome C protein from two different species, analyze the sequence of amino acids, and because we understand that that sequence of amino acids is dictated by the sequence of bases on the DNA, we're able to determine how similar or different the DNA is between two species. For example, here's a table of cytochrome C analysis from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different species. What you can see is each letter is used to represent a different amino acid. And I wanna play one more little game here. I want you to pause the video in a minute, analyze this information, and answer this question. 
which two species are the most closely related out of human and pig, uh, dog and chicken, or dog and cow? Using the amino acid sequence, work out which of those are more closely related, human and pig, dog and chicken, or dog and cow. Press pause now and have a look. So the answer that you should have got is that dog and cow are the most closely related based on this information because there are no differences in the amino acid sequence between dog and cow, which means their DNA sequence would be identical or very similar. It may not be identical because remember there's more than one codon for each amino acid. So there may be slight differences, but not many. Whereas with dog and chicken, there were 10 differences in the amino acids, which suggests a lot of differences in the DNA. And between human and pig, there were eight differences, which suggests there are quite a bit of difference in the DNA there also. Now remember, species have evolved as a result of changes in their DNA. So if two species separated recently, there's been less time for their DNA to change, and so their DNA will be more similar. If species separated a long time ago, there's been more time for their DNA to change, and so you would expect to see more differences in their DNA sequences. So there you have it guys, that's some of the techniques that are used to determine evolutionary relationships. Fascinating stuff, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.